And welcome back to Way of the Wrench. And on today's very special episode, we are going to do a little bit of an upgrade from this Creality Ender 3, which really was nothing wrong with it. And it is a great entry level printer, uh, but it's not mine. We're borrowing it. I just got myself a brand new Bamboo Labs X1 with an AMS on it. So I'm excited to show you guys how to set it up. Let's go. All right, here she is, the Bamboo Labs X1 with the AMS or the Automatic Material System. So that means that you can change colors on the fly in between a print. You can even change the different materials. So you could have PETG and PLA and support materials and all kinds of stuff. So I'm super excited to get this going and excited to show you how fast this thing's gonna be. Um, so hopefully by the end of the video, I'll be able to show you something like a, a Benchy printout, show you how fast this thing is. So I'm going to do something a little different in this video. I'm going to just do the work and then I'll do a voiceover after just so that we can kind of make this a shorter video for you guys. All right, let's go. All right, at this time, channel your inner garbage man and grab the bags with a good grip and lift it up out of the box. Now you do get a little toy outboard and three rolls of PLA filament with the AMS package. Okay, now go ahead and take all the plastic off and the tape off and make sure you don't throw away the instructions. All right, so top of the machine, there is a quick start assembly guide. So we'll look through this first. And man, it comes with a sheet of stickers. Man, I'm a sucker for stickers. Cool. Okay, go ahead and take the styrofoam packing out. And you can also take the accessory box out. And then open up the inside and take the little set screws that hold the AMS unit in place. And go ahead and lift it out. Take the four screws out that are marked with the red arrows. And then you can take that bottom bracket that was holding the AMS unit completely out. Go ahead and recycle it. Take the cardboard out from around the printer head and you can take the styrofoam out from the poop chute. Turn the printer around, it'll be easier to work on for this next part. Okay, take the plastic off the AMS unit as well as the glass top and then go ahead and set the AMS unit on top. Okay, take that top tube from the AMS and put it into the top hole on the back of the printer. And then you're gonna have to go into the cardboard box that has all of the different connectors. And you're gonna be searching for two of the electrical cables. One of the cables goes from the AMS unit to just underneath where we just put the tube in. And the other one goes on the other side. Now don't worry about getting them mixed up because they have different uh, connector plugs that you can't mix up. Okay, take an Allen wrench and take out the screws where it says spool holder. And in the cardboard box is the spool holder bracket. It does say top on it, so make sure you get it going the right way and then snug these up. Okay, then go ahead and turn it back around facing the front so we can finish this up. Okay, remove the three screws for the hotbed. Okay, take the tape off the little ribbon cable and go ahead and take the little mini display out. Make sure this goes on. It only goes on one way and it should click. And then once you got it in there, you're gonna put those tabs in the slots and then push it over to the left to get it to lock in place. All right, at this point, it's wanting us to download something called the Bamboo Handy app. So I'm gonna do that on my phone, but I'm sure you can do it on a computer as well. And then you're gonna register and log in before you put power to the machine. So go ahead and do that. Okay, once you got the power going, you can go ahead and go through the menus to get your internet set up, or you can skip it. And then once you got that, go through all these menu screens, accept things, and start the calibration process. Now, this took about 15 or 20 minutes. And it's going to do a bunch of goofy stuff like go through its range of motions and vibrate the motors and do everything it needs to to get all set up now when you get this all done you're going to have a screen that says go ahead and take the foam out because that was trapped underneath and then you're good to go now at the initial turn on of the machine if you have your internet hooked up to this you will be greeted with this qr code and then once you've downloaded your bamboo handy app you can simply scan the qr code to bind your phone to the printer or if you skipped it during the initial setup, you can come back to the screen. You just have to go to the little nut symbol and then go to account. And um, after you got your internet set up, you can do that. Um, the other option, if you don't have internet, is you can actually use Bluetooth with your phone. Just make sure your phone's got Bluetooth turned on and you just go to nearby devices and take a look for it that way. Then you just have to confirm it. Okay, and if you've done this successfully, it should show you your user number there. We do have a red dot on general, so let's check that. Okay, I'm getting a new firmware update it has been detected. Let's go to the update page. Okay, it looks like we got something to update here, so we can press the update button. 
and let it do its thing. Now that that's all set up, it's time to get some filament in here. And there was three spools that came with this, and I'm not gonna put them all in for now, but they do recommend doing a single color with the PLA basic, so that's what I'm gonna put in. Okay, go ahead and take the plastic bag from inside out, and then you can pop the caps and take the sealed desiccant bags out. Take them out of the plastic bags and put them back in the little pockets and put the grills back. Now take whatever roll of filament you have and push it into the hole with the power on and it will automatically start feeding and the Bamboo Labs filament will automatically detect and it'll know what it is. Kind of cool. All right, cool. Officially that is all set up, but I'd like to leave you with seeing how this thing actually operates. So we're going to just do a test print of a file that's in here already, probably one of those little benchy boats. And I want to see how fast and how well this looks when we're done. So let's do that. Okay, go to the folder icon. And there we go, there's a Benchy, a bunch of other stuff as well, but let's just do the Benchy. Okay, after the heat bed is done its preheating and the nozzle's preheated, it is now cleaning the nozzle tip. And so it's making sure that it is solid material all the way to the end and kind of lets some extra poop out the back there. And uh, now it is just gonna be doing the auto bed leveling. And compared to the Ender 3, doing this all manually seems like a thing of the past. Pretty slick. This x one has got all kinds of cool things, including some LiDAR, so it can actually detect the first layer, whether it's good or not. I'm really excited about getting this machine. Okay, this part here is doing some calibration. So it's putting out some plastic in a certain pattern, and then it's gonna use the LiDAR to figure out if it's okay and uh, make any calibrations needed. Nope, oh, here we go, we're onto the Benchy. Cool. So it's printed the very first layer. It looks like it's going to inspect it, make sure everything's on track. First thoughts, that's crazy fast. Hopefully it's nice and fast without sacrificing the actual surface finish though. All right, this is going to take a little bit still, so I'm going to see you back at the end here. There we go, first part, and that took 25 minutes, which seems pretty fast. I used 12.2 grams of PLA, and it even is asking, did I have any issues with first layer defect, spaghetti failures, uh, did any purged filaments pile up, and I didn't have any of that issues, but it's nice to know that it's asking, so it kind of make itself better for you in the future or other people. Very cool. So in general, I would wait until the print bed is cooled down before you remove your parts, but I am pretty anxious to see how this looks, so. All right, check it out. That print turned out amazing. There is very little wrong with this. There's just a couple little loose strings. Uh, but considering that I didn't even put this through a slicer and uh, set the preferences and everything how I wanted or any kind of fine tuning, that came out pretty awesome. All right, that literally just fell off with me flexing the plate once it was cold. Bottom details are very clear. We can see all the writing. Wow, very cool and I'm excited to test the limits of this machine going forward. Sick. Cool, I hope you enjoyed the video of how to set up your X1, and you can see that was not very hard at all, and I found the instructions very clear to follow, and um, no hiccups at all. I literally did everything it told me to do, and I had a printed part in uh, 25 minutes after the setup, so pretty cool. Um, if you would like to learn more about kind of stuff that I haven't talked about, like prepping your bed surfaces and leveling and, and other things more just general about how to do 3D printing, I have a great introduction to 3D printing video, which I will post a link above for you to go watch that. And um, look forward to more videos in this playlist in the future as we print off parts for our virtual pinball cabinet or custom carbon fiber uh, prototype parts for cars. I want to print some flexible materials in here to make some gaskets for our small engines. Uh, welding jigs, like there's just lots of ideas and not enough time to do them all. If you have any questions about what we did in the video, put it down in the comment section below and I'll help you out as much as possible. And if you haven't already, why don't you join us on Instagram so you can see what's going on in the shop in between videos, including cool 3D printed stuff. Till next time.
Take it easy.